Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Claronet Cybersecurity TV. My name is Roman Mironov and I'm a penetration test team leader here at Claronet Security Business Unit, formerly known as SEC1. In this episode, we will be continuing the OVASP Top 10 series and discussing A6, Security Misconfiguration. The agenda is as follows. I will start with a brief introduction of OWASP Top 10. I will then move on to describing what security misconfiguration means, how such vulnerabilities can be identified, prevented, and remediated. OWASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project, which aims to provide cybersecurity suggestions free of charge so that anyone can use the information to improve the security posture of their cyber system. The top 10 list is what they deem as the most critical web application security risks, and it provides information within an awareness document. The following slide displays the top 10 list, and today we'll be focusing on A6, security misconfiguration. Security misconfiguration is one of the broadest and most commonly seen issue. This typically is the result of insecure, default, or incomplete system configurations. Security misconfigurations can happen at any level of an application stack, including the network services, the web server, application server, database, frameworks, custom code, and even pre-installed virtual machines, containers, or storage. They are usually easily exploited and lead not only to just information disclosure, but also quite often result in unauthorized access or even complete system compromise. The process of finding security misconfigurations is following a standard vulnerability assessment methodology of starting with identifying the attack surface by using system and service discovery tools such as port scanners, then narrowing it down with other tools, such as web application crawlers. The identified services are then subject to vulnerability scans and login interfaces are assessed with brute forcing tools against a list of default or weak credentials. However, often it is difficult for automated tools to say what is or is not a security misconfiguration. Therefore, manual review of services, applications and access they provide is required. Some of the most common misconfigurations include default configurations that have never been changed or remain insecure, incomplete configurations that are intended to be temporary, and wrong assumptions about the expected system behavior and its connectivity requirements. For example, a large of hardware and software is typically shipped with a predefined password, which is shared across all systems, meaning that attackers can easily find out the credentials if the defaults have not been changed. Error messages and stack tracing not handled on display to users may result in leakage of sensitive information. Failure to remove unnecessary features, components, documentation, and samples can also make systems susceptible to misconfiguration vulnerabilities. These are also only some of the common misconfiguration examples, and these are also often coming as a result of outdated software being in use. However, Unnecessary features and services being enabled is probably the most common example of security misconfigurations. Attackers constantly scan the internet for open ports looking for exposed services, such as RDP and SMB, which in most cases should not be exposed to the public. In fact, according to a research done by McAfee in 2020, almost 4.5 million RDP ports were found to be exposed in March this year. Just having the service exposed is already a risk, but on top of that, a fifth of the identified systems were found to be running Windows 7, which is no longer supported by Microsoft, meaning that no security updates will be released for this service. Similarly, over half a million of systems are still exposing SMB service to the internet, and this is after the 2017 WannaCry incident, which exploited exposed vulnerable SMB servers. In June 2020, a new wormable vulnerability affecting the SMB service was revealed by a security researcher called SMB Ghost. And although there are no publicly available exploits at the moment, there is evidence that malicious actors are already exploiting this vulnerability. 
Considering the number of exposed SMB services, this is another disaster just waiting to happen. Interestingly enough though, the most common point of entry still remains to be weak passwords, and in case of exposed RDB servers, the most common password is no password at all. Another interesting example of a security misconfiguration happens when using test environments and services. The displayed screenshot shows what I have personally seen on a recent internal network security assessment, where a network engineer has set up a trial version of AD Manager Plus, an active directory management interface, to see how well it fits into the IT department's workflow. Unfortunately for him, not only he forgot to remove the tool after the evaluation period has ended, he also left unchanged the weak administrator password that is set up by default. Even though the application reverted to free edition, this did not stop me from, unauthentic from authenticating using the weak default credentials and creating a new domain administrator account, thereby compromising the domain. Luckily for him, this was a penetration test and not an actual attack on their network. Another example that I recently seen was a telephony application configured with default administrative credentials. You may incorrectly assume that an attacker would not be able to exploit this to his advantage, but such tools are typically configured to communicate with the domain controllers and are set up with highly privileged domain accounts. At the same time, having administrative access to such applications allows modification of its settings, including where the domain credentials are being sent, to the systems originally configured, or the attacker's machine. Another common occurrence of security misconfigurations that we see during assessments are applications configured to display verbose errors. Funnily enough, the out-of-box configuration of ASP.NET provides verbose errors to the application users which quite often leak all sorts of information, including not only the version of the installed server software, but in some cases, even the application's source code. Very convenient for the attackers. Default files being publicly accessible can also cause all sorts of issues and is another great example of security misconfiguration. The official PHP documentation makes a recommendation to create a file that calls the PHP info function in order to test that the PHP installation was successful. However, it is a common mistake to forget to remove this file after testing was performed. The information leaked by PHP info function includes physical paths, environment variables, and even full PHP configuration settings, and attackers would be very happy to get their hands on these details. According to OSP's Securing Tomcat page, most weaknesses in Apache Tomcat come from incorrect or inappropriate configurations and it is nearly always possible to make Tomcat more secure than the default out-of-the-box installation. However, not only must all operating systems, frameworks, libraries, and applications be securely configured, they must be also patched and upgraded in a timely fashion, since running out-of-date software may also cause security misconfigurations. In fact, when older versions of Apache Tomcat are installed with default configuration, several example files are also installed. These files are publicly known to be affected by numerous vulnerabilities and keeping these may inadvertently result in information disclosure, directory listing, cross-site scripting, and even session manipulation. As you've seen, there is no one-size-fits-all fix for security misconfigurations, but there are a number of general advices and precautions that can help you avoid them. Most importantly, keeping a minimal platform should be your main focus. Removing unused features, components, and samples not only reduces the attack surface, but also makes it easier to manage such systems and helps reduce the chance of a security misconfiguration. New environments should be deployed using an automated repeating process. Having environments that are identically configured and locked down makes it less likely that you'll make a mistake when deploying them. Just don't forget to avoid password reuse and make sure you set up your systems with unique credentials. You should obviously review and update all your configurations as part of the patch management pol policy. Finally, applying a segmented approach helps with separation between components and tenants, reducing a chance of a security misconfiguration being useful to an attacker. 
Thank you very much for listening, and I hope to see you on our next episode of OWASP Top 10 series. Goodbye. Thank you.